Hearing of the Danish terror caused by Grendel, a young warrior named Beowulf sets out from Jatland with 14 other warriors to deliver the Danes from the monster. Beowulf is peerless. The poet says, in his day, he was the mightiest man on earth, high-born and powerful. The Yiddish elders inspected omens, another pagan practice, and they encouraged Beowulf to go to the Danes. He sails across the sea from Sweden to the Danish island of Zealand, beaches his ship, and is challenged by a Danish watchman who guards the coast. Beowulf, the poet says, unlocked his word hoard and explains why he has come. After the watchman hears Beowulf's intent, he gives curious advice. In line 287, he says to Beowulf, Anyone with gumption and a sharp mind will take the measure of two things, what's said and what's done. In other words, he exhorts the young warrior to be sure his words and deeds match. Beowulf has promised to bring deliverance, so the watchman warns him against both cowardice and vain glory-seeking. He exhorts Beowulf to keep his boasts and not to let his pride outstrip his ability. These moral warnings and advice, and we'll have several of them, Beowulf receives several such warnings, these these pieces of advice mark the beginning of another interlaced thread that will parallel Beowulf's development as a character and as a warrior as well. Notice, though, that Beowulf first appears in line 194, but his name isn't given until line 343. This technique of delayed identification draws our attention to the action of Beowulf, as if Beowulf is too busy doing things to give his name, even to the watchman. And we should notice also that even from in these first 150 lines, 200 lines, we already see several similarities between Beowulf and Christ. Christ also came from across the sea to deliver a people enslaved in fear to a demon tormentor, a hero who didn't reveal himself immediately either, who had no form or majesty that we should look at them, Isaiah says in chapter 53, but made himself known through his actions. In my reading of the poem, the similarities between Beowulf and Christ are central to the poem's meaning, so keep watching for them to develop as you read through the poem. After the necessary formalities of introduction, Beowulf presents himself to Hrothgar and makes his bold boast. He says to the Danish king, Now I mean to be a match for Grendel. Settle the outcome in single combat. I have heard, moreover, that the monster scorns in his reckless way to use weapons. I hereby renounce sword and the shelter of the broad shield, the heavy war board. In Anglo-Saxon culture, boasts were not merely chest thumpings, testosterone-driven words uh, to, to stir up desires for glory. Rather, boasts were vital to the warrior culture. Boasts made before a number of witnesses would be remembered by the warrior at the crucial moment before the fighting started. And remembering his boast, his verbal contract, would strengthen his bravery and resolve when it mattered most, and when it was most likely to fail. Remarkably, Beowulf not only promises to fight Grendel in single combat, but to fight him without weapons or armor. He does this because Grendel doesn't use weapons himself, and Beowulf wants a fair fight. He doesn't want anyone saying that he, that he defeated Grendel because he was better armed than the monster. And so the, the stage is set for the battle of hero and monster. Hand to hand is how it will be, a life and death fight with the fiend. Hrothgar accepts Beowulf's aid and relates how Beowulf's father, Ejthiao, was once a guest friend of the Danes. Ejthiao had killed a man and was exiled by his people to avoid war. Hrothgar eventually paid the Ware Guild the blood price that enabled Ejthiao to return home. This begins to tell us something about Hrothgar. His generosity to a stranger like Ejthiao shows that he is not only a truly great king, but also is sincerely concerned about establishing lasting peace, even in other kingdoms. But Hrothgar cannot buy peace from Grendel. It can only be won through the sword of a warrior like Beowulf. And it is likely that Beowulf's desire to help the Danes, to help Hrothgar particularly, comes from his gratitude for Hrothgar's kindness to his father. In true Anglo-Saxon fashion, before the fighting comes the feasting. Hrothgar invites Beowulf to sit down for meat, mead, and melody, a feast to honor his guest and strengthen the bonds between the Danes and the Yates. 
But there is another child of Cain and Herat who threatens to ruin this meal before Grendel comes. <laughs> 